today we're doing some little short um, studies of ice, Iceland car culture. We've done a lot of drawings from this uh, Instagram. I'm sort of a fan, but let's keep going. So, a couple changes um, with the latest version of Heavy Paint. First, we've got left and righty sort of back to how it was in the old version. So the color circle switches size depending on if you're lefty or righty. This doesn't really matter so much on desktop because um, your hand doesn't get in the way of the screen unless you're using a Cintiq. But uh, for people that are using a Cintiq or people that are using a, you know, a, an iPad or some sort of a phone like the touch screen, this really matters because you don't want to block your um, color circle with your finger. So this this will just like get it out of the way for you. And then now it also moves the, the timer to the left or the right and also moves the knobs. Um, hello, Sina. Also, today I'm trying out something new with uh, hardcore mode. Um, it doesn't have undo anymore, so I'm going to see if this is even if it's good or not, if I get better paintings out of it. Um, and then the, oh, already. And then the other thing that's changed is uh, color jitter now controls the texture saturation. So if, if I get this like more colorful texture, you'll see, whoa. Um, so there you see like, this texture has a lot of color in it, in, in the actual, texture and if we bring this down it'll turn down the color jitter and also turn down the saturation on the on the texture itself now that doesn't affect the alpha channel so you still get the uh, you know the transparency of the texture but the color you can control with color jitter I'm, I'm still not sure about this I, I mean to for full control this should be a whole nother control just for the texture saturation so it doesn't have to be uh, linked to the color jitter but I don't know this is how it used to work in the old version so I'm just trying to get back to that um, and then also there was a bug with hardcore mode if you started the program with hardcore mode on you wouldn't be able to get out of it um, so that's been fixed and then some other little bug fixes too anyway that's all out of the way so let's get back into some drawing and uh, yeah let's do five minutes again Add, oh yeah also added a little blurry texture to the timer I think that looks kind of neat Um, but yeah, we're getting close, getting close to, to finishing this version. I feel like I'm getting more and more into polishing stuff, which is a good sign. I can finally have it on, uh, you know, make this the official version instead of beta. It's been about three or four months, I think working on this one which is actually pretty fast compared to how long it took me to do to do the the original heavy paint it was like over the course of a few years so this version is going a lot faster hopefully means that you know improvements and stuff will start happening faster now that I kind of feel more comfortable with this uh, Godot engine and programming in general. But yeah, the tricky thing is always trying to keep the, the same soul that the original version had and just keeping everything simple. So I'm uh, one, one of the big questions I have now is how to, what the default settings should be when you first open the program, you know, as a brand new user, I want you to be kind of presented with a limited 
set of tools that are really fun and kind of not too crazy. So you sort of get sucked in right away and enjoy your first uh, time using it. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe something like no undo is, is a pretty big turnoff though. So that might be a little too scary for first time. So I'll probably have undo. But things like layers, I, I don't think I'm going to put layers as a default because uh, I think you get a, a more fun, you have more fun painting without it. God, my drawing is really messed up. I think I was, I can't draw and talk at the same time. you guys are doing better than me on uh, this drawing oh man uh, these tires are like balloons basically just huge Poofy things. Pretty cool. Alright. You know, I think I'm actually getting worse at drawing because I've been uh, doing this uh, coding stuff too much. So my drawing's going down the tubes. Um, so I need to do some uh, exercises maybe, some practice. Which we could maybe do, maybe after this one I'll do a couple of exercises just to warm up and maybe, maybe that'll be helpful for anyone who's trying to uh, get into drawing. Some of the boring stuff we used to do in school just to warm up but it's actually pretty useful and I still do them once in a while um, I should probably do them more but uh, I think I only have time for a sketch on this one at least I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not comfortable enough yet to do an actual painting Okay, we're done. Next next drawing. So I'm keeping the, let, let's do some little exercises here, just real quick. So I'm gonna just get a brighter color so I can see what's going on and make a smaller color here. Oh yeah, that's, that's a new thing. This, I've added this little um, dark circle around the knob when you drag on it because the thing is when you start dragging, you can actually drag off of the knob and I just wanted to let the user know that you can do that because if you're dragging directly on the knob it's very sensitive but if you're like dragging far away you have a lot more control so hopefully this little indicator will help people to uh, get that right away um, okay so the exercise real quick let's just do a page of cubes but they're special VizDev cubes okay so we're, we're trying to do a cube, which is hard enough as it is. I mean, it, it sounds very simple, but cubes are damn hard to draw, in my opinion, to draw a nice one. Um, so I'm gonna go like that. Okay, that's as good of a cube as I can. The, the, you have to be really sensitive about when this happens too, when, when your cube's lines are like, pointing inwards like this, that's bad. So I'm trying to like force it that way so it, it's converging or it's it's getting smaller and smaller towards that side and it's getting bigger and bigger 
towards this side you know what I mean so yeah um, anyway we have a cube and that's that's just the first step because we got to do this is the hard part now is we're gonna switch to another color and start adding in these diagonal lines everywhere so just connecting up all every single corner of your cube until you get these X's everywhere okay so that's step two and then the hardest part oh actually no no, no. that's step two step three is to, to put in these cross it again through the middle up and down up and down and also side to side these you have to be tricky with because they they also have to go in perspective um, okay so we're just crossing this box up and if you guys have you know done any kind of mechanical drawing this this is really helpful for robots or cars or architecture or anything mechanical in nature okay so now the hardest part the hardest part of this exercise is the ellipse so uh, the way they teach us in school a trick is if you get one of these quadrants one of these uh, diagonal quadrants let's say uh, this one and you split it into one two three sections like that like into thirds so here 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 and then this one over here is kind of the target or actually a little bit farther than than this so like a little bit more than a third right about here so then you start putting in these dots everywhere so there's a dot up here there's a dot over here there's a dot down there if we split this one in thirds also down here it's like there's a dot there a dot there about there 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 okay so I mean that's actually kind of hard to see but you get the point right we're, we're plotting out a bunch of dots where the circle might go through or the ellipse sorry all right, so now we're gonna draw the ellipse. And now that we have these uh, guidelines, it's a little bit easier. And we have the point where we're supposed to hit through. And it's okay to, to be a little careful with these if you're not used to it. If you're like super pro, some people can like hit it in one sweep all at once, but I'm, I'm feeling a bit like a baby giraffe so I'm gonna go slowly and try to make that really nice ellipse that hits all those points there okay so then you're gonna repeat that everywhere I know it's a pain but that's like it's a pretty good exercise for sort of like calibrating yourself and the other neat thing is like if the, these lines here should also connect up in perspective so you could you could do like this to get these these corners and then now uh, draw the ellipse again and um, once you do about like I don't know a hundred of these cubes you will be so much better at perspective and ellipses which are the two main enemies of anybody drawing a car is perspective and ellipses but uh, the, just drawing this cube will, will help you to uh, defeat your enemies so with this top one I'm just gonna guess here and, and you'll also start to see like what your tendencies are for me my tendencies are usually that I will my ellipses will tend to look squished so let's say there's a a plane here 
I noticed when, when I was uh, doing this exercise a lot is that my ellipses sometimes would be kind of like football-y or, or squished in one axis or like maybe tilted a little bit. And I mean, it's really difficult. There's no real way to like completely fix it, but at least having these guidelines along the corners will help you to get get yourself at least in the ballpark of where where they're supposed to be and it's okay to try to like draw it in little sections like this too you don't have to hit it all at once like if you're trying to be an industrial design um, Chad I guess you can go like this and attempt it uh, freehand and just all in one hit which I'm gonna fail here but something like that you, you need to be like in the groove to hit that properly which I am not I feel like a baby giraffe but if you try it enough times maybe you'll get close but you know if you're doing pages and pages and pages of these eventually you will be able to hit that right away like on your first try and it's a pretty awesome uh, feeling if you actually do get there um, oh wow Steiner from Iceland welcome we are drawing uh, Iceland car culture <laughs> today the Instagram it's one of my favorite favorite Instagrams to draw um, hello Bane, thank you. Hello Basim. Um, what are we painting today? We're painting these, these cars. So actually, let me, let me just draw a couple more of these. Up. And I encourage you guys to also try it out. I mean, this stuff is never, it never hurts. It's always good for you. It's like, you know, eating your vegetables probably have a more successful uh, paint session today if we if we draw these first and then also it's just practice drawing cubes which are deceptively uh, they're kind of challenging I think to draw a cube like that's this cube is all messed up it looks all wonky right top is trying to like creep away hello Toto welcome we are drawing cubes riveting content for you guys today but it's good for you is eating your vegetables um, and if you get if anybody's interested in this kind of stuff and they want to train like to do industrial design sketching then you should um, look up this book called um, Viscom which is I think it's called Viscom but it's like an old book that just has a lot of exercises like this I think another one is like having a bunch of dots everywhere and you can try to you can try to like make a curve that goes through a bunch of random dots um, another exercise is to do an entire page all the way across like this and depending on how big your page is this might be more difficult because you you would have to use your entire elbow your whole arm to get across the page you know we used to draw on like 18 by 24 newsprint in school, which kind of forced you to use your entire arm. But I prefer drawing small these days. I don't know why. I, I, I think it's easier to draw small for me. 
So you would go that way and then you would go this way. And then to make it even more difficult, you could also try going the opposite uh, direction that you feel is natural. So if you if you naturally drag your um, pen from like right to left, like I do, then you, sh you can try to do this exercise by going left to right and you can see it's already like all kinds of wonky. But the idea is you, you want to try to be able to draw a line, a nice line from any angle, like from any direction and hit it. Yeah, so my ones from left to right are all wobbly because I don't practice that way enough. Okay. Yeah, VizCom, which is um, short for Visual Communication, which is uh, what this style of drawing is called. And that's what they teach you at um, art school or design schools like uh, Art Center or College for Creative Studies in Detroit, where I went. And they try to get you to be able to draw stuff. Um, and describe shapes very clearly and easily, but I'm probably uh, embarrassing my teachers now by drawing like this because uh, my, I've let my drawing skills go to doo-doo. But I, it's okay. Uh, I'm okay with, with wonky drawings though. I, I like wonky drawings too. They're kind of charming. Maybe this needs to be a little bit thicker so I can see. All right, let's set the timer for this one try it five minutes guys so feel free to uh, join along if you want we're just trying to do some low pressure drawings today uh, you know five minutes can't hurt right uh, but it can help <laughs> if you if you do it consistently at least um, which I'm, I'm very bad at, so I'm trying to work on it. We used to do this a lot, like, I guess one or two years ago on the channel, we were doing it every day, every morning, actually. It was a really good habit, but lately I've just been uh, working on heavy paint, so I don't really have a chance to draw as much as I, uh, I was before. But... I wish I could, though. But anyway, we're doing it now, so it's fine. And I'm trying to paint with the fill tool with the biggest possible shapes. So I'm ignoring all the windows and the headlights and everything like that. We can just um, save that for later since we're not using any layers here. Uh, I have no undo as well, which is a little bit crazy. Okay, so underneath should be pretty dark. We have three minutes left. Um, yeah, some of I think a couple people posted their paintings last time, which I sort of missed. But if if you guys want to do it this time, we can make it do a little mini critique at the end. Um,
post it in the Google Drive and see what everybody does. Oh my gosh. I feel like a baby giraffe. Mine is coming out pretty cartoony. I don't know about you guys. But mine looks like a Dr. Seuss version. the most important thing here before we run out of time uh, let's see maybe these wheel wells um, here you can try to get this big nose um, and then I'll fill the middle with the gray color um, I like this red stripe that goes down the side let's try that uh, and I also like this blue shadow that's Coming down here. Oops. Oh, thank you for uh, whoever just did that notification thing. Oh, yeah. Welcome, guys. We are drawing some Iceland car culture. Damn it! <laughs> uh, okay, I guess I didn't have enough time, but oh, I'm gonna cheat. So I'm gonna go here and just put in the the mirror real quick okay that's that's enough five minutes okay next one maximum human attention span is 10 minutes these days so five minutes sounds cool also they give you the amazing Minimal color blocks or paintings. Yeah, exactly. It forces you to simplify, which is uh, really nice. This thing is crazy. You know what? We might actually be better off keeping these as tiny thumbnails like this. You know, like drawing smaller helps you to simplify as well. So let's just try. I'm going to try this orange tank tread thing oh yeah let's run it and let's see if this maybe this one will come out better because it's uh, smaller just fill up the whole background first and then I should have just done that at the beginning every second counts now I guess It's it's much easier to get the correct proportions when the drawing when the thing is small. Cuz I can see like this this line goes straight through the middle of the picture. It's just easier to wrap your head around the shapes, I feel like. Okay. And then that really cool sharp shadow. I'm already liking how this feels at this size. I 
I feel more confident. Um, I think it, maybe it's because I'm used to drawing in small, smaller sketchbooks. This just feels more natural to me. carriage two minutes for you okay I'm pretty happy with that block out and then we, when we start adding in all these um, windows and graphics, it's going to look really cool, I think. These windows, by the way, are so goofy and kind of cool. So I'm just going to draw the full on shape of the window first, and then we can get those little smaller details within the window later like the uh, the other side of the building coming through so let's see it's like this like that like that One minute, 30 seconds. Shit. Let's go, 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 go. I guess we should get some of these um, treads. We use a line tool for this. I have time for the baby carriage in 30 seconds but if you guys actually got that in then kudos to you pretty ambitious I'll just try to get some of the structure of the building maybe 13 seconds no Okay, we're done. Next one, let's go. Hello, Nathan. Welcome. Okay. What about some Jimny? Oh yeah, we're gonna keep it small, right? Makes it easier. Keep my painting tiny also. I only got five minutes. Oh, let me start the timer. Whatever, the background doesn't really matter in this case. I'm just gonna put some sort of shapes and forget about it. This truck kind of reminds me of a pug or some sort of stubby 
nose dog if you like let me turn on color history The front wheel like actually steps out on the far side. It, it like pops out beyond the nose a lot. So make sure to try to get that in too. That's also what sort of makes it look like a, one of those, like a short squat boxy dog that like, you know how their legs just like, they pop out to the corners. Um, But yeah, let's try to get the boxiness. I'm gonna cut away from the back with the background and also the hood. Cut away with it with the background color. Okay, two minutes. Okay, and I think I'm going to try to get these nice dark shadows behind the wheels. And maybe fill gradient would be nice for this shadow underneath. Unless uh, I'm forgetting the headlight graphics and the front graphics. Let's get those in. Very cute. On the white paint, the brightest, brightest white, if you look at it, is not really on the top of the hood. It's more on the corner of the hood, like where the front of the hood meets the top. Like right there, there's a bright white line. So I'm going to put my lightest light right there. And also over here on the corner of the bumper. And then a little bit less bright for the hood itself. Oh no, 10 seconds. What a derpy looking painting. Okay. Next is gonna be this thing, maybe? That's pretty <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Why? Um alright, let's go. Next page. Go. 
Um, how's this going, guys? Is anybody following? Is this too fast? Maybe it's too fast. I feel like it's too fast. But, it's kind of fun. drawing them that's probably smarter to only just do the drawing and make it make a nice drawing out of it I don't know why I'm trying to let's see I like this color Pretty chill color. Hmm. Okay. It's okay if your wheels are too big in this case. I feel like you can't ever go too big on these like cartoony cars because they look ridiculous anyway might as well go all out on it so I'm I, I should actually exaggerate and make this even bigger Try to get that um, sky reflecting in the hood. So it should be more blue and more green. And then the hood hood is basically, uh, the, the roof color is basically the same as the sky color. It's super bright. I think I need to lower my color jitter a little bit. Can get a, um, some more control on the color. Okay, I need to put that plow. <laughs> it's kind of a big missing detail here. The reflection of that plow is awesome. Let's see, two big white triangles. And then... Some of this. It gets pretty dark in the upper side of the... of the reflection. You could uh, maybe that's like a s number seven gray. Um, number seven cool gray, number seven warm gray over here, or maybe five. I don't know. Oh no! Out of time. Shit. Ah, I'm going to cheat on this one.
We had to do an extra plow, so we need an extra minute for the plow. And then this reflection of the wheel into the ground is actually becoming kind of orangey brownish. So I like that. And then top is like Uh, these kind of wet reflections are always so fun. I love love doing that stuff. Oh, you know what would be good is the the windows would be good. <laughs> Keep getting like the most basic stuff. Okay. I guess that's five minutes. We already painted that one. We've painted like probably 50 or 60 of these on the stream maybe, maybe more uh, let's see we painted that red one we painted we haven't painted this I can try this one yeah five minutes more abstract yeah maybe could be more <laughs> playful Let's see. Five minutes, go. Let's see, if, if we're thinking of this abstractly, it's like an orange diamond uh, in the middle. Sort of like that. And then there's like a greenish. So when you say abstract, I'm thinking like shapes, right? So we're just saying maybe we can be more blocky with the shapes more simple with the shapes more general okay so maybe there's a big orange diamond and then there's a smaller white diamond inside here it's pretty blue and it's pretty slanted everything feels slanted maybe we can use chisel with the angle there and try to get some texture on it like this turn off pressure
show some more green up to the top. I'm running out of time, aren't I? Okay, good enough for the background. Uh, hood gets pretty bright. Oops. kind of happy with this one. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, I think going at it more from a shapes abstract shapes perspective made it made it better cool and we actually finished on time with this one for a change okay this is my favorite one for the day so far I'm glad we tried that one all right what about oh this one's kind of crazy there's so many effects going on so blurry. This this one I imagine will be difficult, but I want to try it. Okay. So how are we gonna do this? Uh, the thing that's wor worrisome is all the soft snow clouds and effects like that but maybe we can simplify it let's try um, okay first we need the dark scary background it's kind of reddish I'm cheating I'm using undo Okay, and then snow. I think I'm gonna go for this dark color of the snow first, and then put the light after. So I'm, I'm shooting for this. It's like a dark greenish. Even though we're dealing with snow, it's still pretty dark in the middle of night, right? Let's say that. And then over here, the dark color is more reddish. So I'm ignoring all the highlights, all the light parts. Just, just Let's just try to get the the general colors in and then over there it's more orangish okay general colors nothing fancy yet and then maybe on top we start adding in the white triangles here and there so there's a white triangle here for sure let's try that one And then there's a white triangle here that actually spreads out. It's kind of greenish.
Maybe it's like that. And then we can uh, cut back into it. I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> Let's see. So now we have to do some actual drawing, I think. Or we got to decide what the, the body side color is. To me, it looks like a bluish, grayish, greenish <laughs> uh, something. We're running out of time also, shit. Becomes more yellow towards the bottom. I feel like this, all this yellow and orange is probably coming from uh, headlights of a car behind it. From behind it, of us. But I like all these yellow triangles that are happening. For the taillights, I'm going to go with fill gradient and make a big poof. And then in the middle, you can put in uh, some orange or yellowy stuff like that. And then there's also some shadows coming from this dude. time almost yeah this one is definitely more complicated than the last one but pretty fun challenge I don't think I did the best job of getting the feeling of this I think there's maybe too much information for me to get all at once I want to put that shadow of the snow. Ah! <laughs> I love shadows and snow because it's so there's so much bounce light happening like right here where that uh, upper wall of the snow is uh, much brighter than the the cast shadow that those kind of effects are so cool I think um, spend a little bit more time on this one. try to get the structure of the snow like the the tread in the snow correct I think that'll help a lot like these grooves that are happening
Yeah, this one not not working. <laughs> I feel I feel like I need to stop this one. Okay. An extended five minutes. Ooh, this one I think will be nice and simple. Okay, let's go. Still pretty purple, the body. Actually, a lot lighter than that. Oh, maybe maybe this could be the wheel wheel wells. Okay, the wheel's uh, pretty wrong here. I'm, I'm gonna move it out. This front corner wheel is too, too narrow. like emerald green triangles. This is kind of interesting because we're not just dealing with the lighting on the car, it's also different materials like the snow is sitting on the, the panels, so it, that's kind of like interesting little material breaks.
Okay, again for the lights, it's gonna be like a, a darker general color of the glow. So in this case, it's green for the inner ones and then amber for the outer ones. And then we'll go back in with like a really hot, intense version of that. And that should make the effect happen for the green. Oh, you got to actually change the color of the green light on the inside too. Don't be lazy. Do it, do the same for these little top ones. I kind of want to draw those ones in the back too. Those are really cool. I'll draw those two little ones in the back because they shouldn't take too much time and I think they'll add a lot to the image. Kind of purple. I'm trying to not make them too too much of a jump in value. So that they stay pretty far back in the distance. The closer in value they are to the sky or to the background, the farther away they'll look, especially since we're like in the middle of a snowstorm or something, right? same process just keep changing the colors for the different temperature of the light I think it's pretty important to like respect each individual color of each light and make it have a lot more life all right then we're gonna go in with the spicy versions We could use uh, charcoal, Vajra's uh, charcoal texture to get some snow. That actually looks awesome. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, I'm very happy with that. 
just like how it is. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this one too. So this one and the one in the river were my two favorites. I think we got a good good little session in. If anybody is still here and wants to post in the morning guts, feel free. I'm going to post the link here just in case. Oh, happened to the chat. Okay. Post this in. Um. Ah, looks like those people did some. I really like this. Uh, this last one, the blue, white, brown one with the little abstract shapes. That's pretty awesome. Um, these are cool too. I wonder why I can't. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this one definitely working nice. <laughs> these ones are cool too, but this one for sure. Oh, it's the cows. Man, these are really nice sketches. Who, who posted those? Michael Hunick or Mikal Hunick. Yeah. Those are awesome sketches. Like the line quality and the pressure and everything. Yeah. Oh my god. And these derpy birds. <laughs> That's super good. All right, I'm going to post I'll just post my two favorite ones here. Snowstorm or Iceland, uh, call it Iceland car or ICC for short. So that one. Go back. I don't like that one. This one I really like. ICC River. this one. Oh, this one's kind of cute. Wow. Uh, so, so. This one's kind of funny. I like it. Uh, treads. Call it orange treads. <laughs> I think the oh shit. I think the exercises actually helped. Or the little warm up helped a little just get Get in the groove a little bit. I'm okay with this one. I think it's cute. All right, I'm gonna upload them here. 
yeah, again, if anybody was drawing along, you can post them here. If not, it's fine too. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just wrap it up after this, but we'll go grab them. Oh, I'm starting to get hungry. Oh, where the hell did I save these? Did I put them in 2020? I need to stop saving stuff in 2020. There's too much stuff in here. What? chance of brush hotkeys coming to PC uh, yes in the future yes yes um, ten mamut okay let's check out yours I'm gonna upload mine also I C C. Oops. Yeah, this used to be a way more active back in the day. We were drawing like crazy. Should get back to... I haven't drawn on paper in like years. <laughs> Pretty bad. Oh man, these are cool too. I never saw that one. Ooh. Alright, let's look at Ten's drawings for a sec. Pretty good. Um, that's solid. Solid. This one, I feel like the the angles are kind of different from the from the picture. Maybe you're looking at a different picture. I don't know. But the the angles were a lot more like there were more triangles happening in this picture, if I remember. Um, this one. Careful with your ellipses. Um, here, maybe I can bring this one in. Did I crash it? Yes, I did. Okay, new page, import. I'm gonna put it in Dropbox. Oh, it's a JPEG, shit. I can't open JPEGs. Well, maybe I can. Can I edit here? Edit. Yeah, so be careful with this. Oh shit, there's no eraser here. Like this wheel's pointing upwards a little bit, so we wanna crank it down a little bit. Unless that's what the, maybe that's what the wheel's actually doing if it's going over bump or something 
but the way the way you can do that is you draw like we were doing in the beginning you draw your your square your plane there where the wheel is supposed to be and then you put your cross in like that and then then you'll be able to draw this and I realize we don't really have time for it in five minutes maybe but that's how you would do it if you had more time to figure it out but these are looking good though I like how you hit it in one one shot it's very confident uh, yeah same with with these wheels they're they're like pointing this way when they should be more pointing that way I think let's see the perspective is a little bit confusing because this line says the perspective is going this way this line says this way this line, line says this way so sometimes when the perspective gets crazy I'll just take the, um, the extremes like this one and the roof are the two like boundary lines I guess and then everything else if we draw all the way to the end of the perspective then everything else needs to come through there you just pick one thing one way and like stick everything to that this one feels good I feel like everything is sort of like facing the same direction and this one too actually the the ellipse here is a little bit tilted the way I'm finding this line is you you find the, the widest point of the ellipse and in this case you want the widest point to be like straight up and down I think Yeah. Yeah, ellipses are definitely the trickiest part. So if you want to improve at that, just draw a gazillion of those cubes we did in the beginning. If anybody wasn't here in the beginning, we we started off by just drawing this kind of basic exercise of the cube with the cross in it. And this is kind of like the key exercise to improve your ellipses. And mine are looking like crap, but you get the idea. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thank you for joining in again. Hope you had fun. I'm going to try to do more drawing in the future, but okay, we'll see you next time. Have a good weekend. Bye bye.